John Hayden said, you better put that woman first. <laughs> but that ain't what Christ did. He said, you put God first. So we need to make sure we listen to the right voice. Because the wrong voices have us going down the wrong path. Amen. But I said all that to say the doors of the church is open. Whosoever will, let them come. You won't be out of order at any time service going forth to come and accept or whatever you feel that you need to do. Sometimes you just might need to just come get something off the chest. Just get that weight off of you. We're here for that. We're here for that. So at this time, the doors of the church is open. Whosoever will, let them come. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for my journey. Touching us somewhere about our bodies and yes, Lord. calling our eyes to open and our days to begin. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Well, Heavenly Father, we, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we don't know how you do all that you do. Yeah, Lord. But Lord, we know that we are included in your plans. Yeah, Lord. Father, we ask you to forgive us for all of our sins. Yeah. Cleanse us, Lord, from all of our unrighteousness. 
Lord, you know more about us than we know about our own selves. Amen. Amen. You know more about what we need than yeah, we know how to ask. Yeah, Father, as prayers has been lifted up, yeah, names have been given, yeah, praises has been offered, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. testimonies of your goodness. Thank you, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we just come to add our voice yeah, just to say thank you. Thank you. Just to say to the Lord, we know that you are a good God. Yes, and Heavenly Father, as we bow, Lord, we, we bow, Lord, because we need strength. Yes, we need you, Heavenly Father, to strengthen us where we are weak and yes, build us up, Father, where we have been torn down. Amen. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will prop us on every lean inside. And as we call upon your holy name, Lord, we pray, God, that you will sanctify us. That you would cleanse us, Lord, our minds, Amen. our thoughts, Amen. all that we are, Heavenly Father, wherever we need to be cleansed, Amen. you know. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we come and we surrender all to you. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we come looking at those who are sick, Amen. thinking Amen. about those who are shut in. Amen. Thinking about those, Heavenly Father, who are locked behind prison walls. We come, Heavenly Father, thinking about those who are struggling in their minds. Struggling, Heavenly Father, in their thoughts. We come, Heavenly Father, thinking about those, Lord, who are drug addicted. Oh, God, they are fighting for their lives, Lord, and they need help. Think about those, Heavenly Father, who alcohol has taken possession of their lives. Oh, Father, we pray, God, that you would just touch them. Give them the strength that they need, Heavenly Father, to overcome. Oh, Heavenly Father, we're thinking about those who are sick, Lord, and battling with cancer. Oh, Lord, let them know that cancer is not the death sentence. Lord, you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Let us know, Heavenly Father, that you are a healer. You are a doctor that's never lost a patient. Lord, you are a lawyer that is in a courtroom. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come calling upon your name, Lord, because we need you. Yes. We need you, Heavenly Father, and we can't get along without you. Yes. Father, we come calling upon your name for those, Lord, who are struggling. Yes. They're struggling, Heavenly Father, just trying to run this race. Yes. Oh, God, the world's got a hold to them, and they're fighting for their lives, Lord. Yes. Oh, Father, today, Lord, we lift them up to you. We bring them, Heavenly Father, to you in our minds and in our hearts, Lord, in our thoughts, God. We bring them to you. Yes. Father, we are praying, Heavenly Father, for those children, yes. those little ones, Heavenly Father, that don't have good guidance. Yes. They don't have no one who are directing them in the right way. Well, Heavenly Father, they need you. Yes. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those mothers, those young mothers and those young fathers. Oh, God, they don't know which way to go. They don't know how to be good parents, Lord. They don't know how to teach and raise their children. We pray in Heavenly Father for them. God, that you would touch them in a way, Lord, that they need to be touched. And Heavenly Father, why we are calling up on your name, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, for every church that has opened their doors in your name. Oh, Heavenly Father, we pray, God, that your truth will go forward this morning. That people's hearts might be convicted and lives might be changed. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our personal home, our personal struggle, those battles and trials and tribulations that each and every one of us go through. Oh, Heavenly Father, we surrender it all to you because we have no strength. We have no answer to ourselves because you are the only answer that we got. And Lord, we come calling upon you because you said when we need you, we can call upon you. And Lord, we come calling upon you right now because you are our God and you are our Father. You are our way maker. God, you are our strength. Lord, there is no other help we know. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to go with us and help us, Lord, to be all that you want us to be. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to bless the age, bless the young, bless us all, God, according to what you see that we are standing in the need of. Lord, there are so many people that are struggling because they don't know what to do. 
There are so many people, Heavenly Father, who have been deceived and they're heading in the wrong direction. There are so many people, Heavenly Father, that feel alone. God don't have nobody to turn to. Let them know, Heavenly Father, that you will never leave them or forsake them. Let them know, God, that you will stand with them when the world turns their back. Father, I pray, God, that you will strengthen. Strengthen our young men. Those, Heavenly Father, whose comrades here to make their profession. And they are battling with their lives. They are battling with their circumstances. They are battling with that old man. God, I know you're able to give them that strength they need. I know, Heavenly Father, you are able to break it down and fix it. I know, God, you can break it down and build it right back up, God. And they are come through new. Father, we just ask you to touch. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to give strength. Lord, our boys are struggling. Our boys are struggling, Lord. Our girls are struggling. Lord, they need your help. Oh, Heavenly Father, they need your help. Lord, just stir them up. Stir them up, Heavenly Father. Let them know, God, that the way of the world ain't the way to go. Let them know, Heavenly Father, the way of God is the way to go. up to you. We lift them up to you, God. We lift them up to you. Oh, Heavenly Father, we can't heal them. We can't give them what they need, Lord, but you can. Oh, Father, we can talk to them. We can encourage them, Lord, but the power is in your hand. So we lift them up. Heavenly Father, we ask you, God, to look all over the land and have mercy. Look all over the land, Lord. Look at that mean man, God, and have mercy. Look at that mean woman, Lord, and have mercy. Oh, God, we pray, Father, for your mercy. Just to touch, your mercy to heal. Heavenly Father, that men, women, boys and girls might be able to look at themselves and say, God, have mercy on me. And Lord, I know that you are a merciful God. And when we call upon you for the bottom of our heart, Lord, I know you hear us. Oh, Heavenly Father, we're not calling just to be calling. We are calling because we know that you are a true God. A God that changes things. A God that has power. A God that gave us the rights to call upon holy name. Oh, Lord, we know we didn't have the rights, but you gave them to us. And Heavenly Father, right now, Lord, we want to take advantage of those rights. And ask your Heavenly Father to heal. Ask your Heavenly Father to strengthen. Ask your Heavenly Father to encourage and give courage. According to your loving kindness. According to your tender love and your mercy. Oh, Heavenly Father, everyone that has someone in their mind, everyone that has someone in their hearts, oh, Heavenly Father, we come into agreement with the prayer that's in them. As they lift up that person to you. I come into agreement, Heavenly Father, as they lift up their sails to you. Yeah. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to touch according to your loving kindness, yeah. according to your tender love, oh, yeah. and your mercy. Yeah. And we claim victory yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Count it is already done. Yeah. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God is so worthy. God is so worthy. I am so thankful. I'm so thankful to what I have heard, what I have felt. The spirit of the almighty God that I know is in this place. Speaking through the mouths of his people. Yeah, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give honor to God, who is our maker, our creator, our heavenly father. Words can never do it. We look for and we try to choose the best one that we can come up with yeah, Lord. 
to just say, God, I honor you. Yeah. And fight hard. To not only just honor him with our lips, but to live out a life that bear testimony to the mild confession. We try to live up to what we say. So we honor God and we know that we we live the best that we can when we walk in faith. We're in a battle. We're in a struggle. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm glad he said I won't leave you. Oh, if he'd have told me he's going to leave, he's going to leave, I'd be in trouble. But he said, I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. Oh, man, that's worth a shout out to you. Never left alone. Never left alone. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we are our Savior, Jesus Christ, come, died, sweated in the garden, and bled on the cross. Buried. After being condemned, lied upon him. And having said he's not worth living, mm-hmm. well. we'd rather have a crook than him. Mm-hmm. That's what the world said. Mm-hmm. And they pushed their agenda. Mm-hmm. And they got it passed. Mm-hmm. But God had an agenda too. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That's what I get excited about it. Because this world is going to continue to push its agenda. But God got his agenda. And just as God called Christ out of the grave and he overturned he overturned the verdict that man had reached against him. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. It lets me know my verdict's going to be overturned too. Yeah. 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 The world say you're guilty. God going to say, I'll quit you. Amen. 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 Praise him. It's all because what Christ did on that cross. Yes, sir. Amen. He took us in himself. Amen. Our sins. Amen. Our transgressions. Amen. Our destructive lifestyle. He took those things in himself. Amen. And he took them simply because we were willing to allow him to take them. Amen. And surrender to him and say, God didn't leave me. I can't live my life right. I can't live in order by myself. I have to have Christ. This is the only way I can be justified is through his name. I live in him. Yeah. Oh my God. I live in Christ Jesus. And the scripture said we don't know how we should be, but when he appear, we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. We give all to the precious Holy Spirit. It is God's way of giving us guidance. Mm-hmm. It's God's way of teaching and guiding, giving counsel, yeah. giving instruction. Mm-hmm. It's God's way of coming to visit us in an unseen way. Mm-hmm. Because we have a world that is visible and a world that is invisible. Mm-hmm. It is how God is able to come to us as an invisible form. 
and makes himself known to us as individual and the world can't see him, but we can see him because he lives in us. Oh, he is so worthy. Praise him for that Holy Spirit. Praise him for that Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. To Reverend McClurk, and we thank God for your service. Amen. Continuing to lift us all up in prayer and, and remind us of that door that Christ set open but also reminded us that the time is coming that door will be shut. Yeah. Telling us we better get on in yeah. <laughs> before we shut up. Yeah. Oh my God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you. To our officers. Amen. Brother, they run off there if y'all didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but we're thankful to God for our officers. Amen. We'll continue to encourage Amen. each one each one of them. Oh, Amen. Amen. Um, and I want to also say that uh, Brother Arthur and I had done a baptizing this morning. We baptized a family of four people. Amen. That wanted, we had, I said we had seven coming, <laughs> but we wound up with four out of seven. Amen. That ain't bad, is it? But a family that wanted to come, some had already knew Christ, they wanted to dedicate, and some just wanted to come and make their confession and go on back to their churches. Amen. And it's something that I feel honored because they said that this is where they wanted to come. Amen. 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 So we thank God for, for that. And Amen. to our mothers, uh, we thank God for Amen. Mother Board and Amen. certainly to the First Ladies. Amen. Uh, to a young lady back there on the door holding it down. Amen. 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 We thank God. And choir, y'all are singing Amen. good. Amen. Sounding good. Amen. Yeah. Amen. yeah, that song is getting all down in my spirit. Amen. Amen. Reminding me how, how deep I was buried. And God dug me out. Amen. Oh, my Lord. That's something, man. We're thankful to God, each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. We're just so thankful to God for you. Um, I'm always trying to find the right thing. Because I don't know what y'all say, but I see time is critical. We're living in some critical time. Amen. The Bible speaks of the love going cold. Amen. We're living in a time where people will just do evil. Just destroy lives for the sake of destroying. It's not surprising because the scripture told us that these days would come. That's why it told us that we need to be ready. Amen. We need strength. Yes. We need a word that gives strength to us. We need something to let us know that God has not left us. We need to know God has an order. He has an expectation, Amen. and he'll help us to reach those expectations, but he sets a high bar, and he don't sell for anything less. Amen. We need to know that God don't step out of his order to step in our order. Amen. But we also need to know that God will save you where you at. Amen. So oftentimes we say we need to come to Jesus. No, but if you get your heart right, Jesus will come to you. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but when he saved me, I couldn't come to him. I was too messed up to come to him. Messed up, shamed, scared, don't know what to do. But I 
but I pray. Amen. Oh, bless his holy name. I pray. And he came to me. And I know I'm not talking about something I hear about. I'm talking about something I've lived. And I continue to live it because he still comes to me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So I am just thankful to God and I pray that he will just help me to say something that's going to be a benefit to us. Because we need to know that there is you can't make up your own rules. Oh, you can make them up, but they won't work. I said they're just like driving on license, just business spending. You can feel good, I got a license in my pocket till you get pulled over. And then they don't work. That's what happens when we make up our own rules. Paul said, I bear witness. They have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge. Yeah. He said they are ignorant of God's righteousness and go about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. I'm going to go on here a minute, but I, I, I want to say this because this wasn't in my thoughts and my message, but it is a thought that I have. The scripture says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm and his righteousness. Amen. And I think a lot of times we read scriptures too fast and go too far. Amen. I think we need to stop right there for a minute. Amen. Seek ye first. Amen. The number one priority that I need to have in my life Amen. is to seek God's kingdom. Amen. What is that? Amen. Seek to know how God governs how God rules, mm -hmm. how God instructs, mm -hmm. how God counsels. Mm -hmm. Seek to know the economy of God because the economy of God is not working off money. Mm -hmm. The economy of God is working off love. Because you ever thought about if you just, if we all just live a love, mm -hmm. we wouldn't need 50 cents. Mm -hmm. Because everything would work. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek his righteousness. Right. What is his righteousness? The things that God desires for us to do. The righteousness of God to live according to his order. Mm -hmm. Seek to get a grip and an understanding on that. And then what did he say? All these things will be added. We mess up. We look for the added stuff first. Oh my God, that's another message, but it's a good one. We want the added stuff first, and then we'll see God later. Don't work that way. Don't work that way. The scripture coming from Matthew 25, the, starting at the 30th verse, it said, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Let me read that again. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, and then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Mm -hmm. Say so like he's going to be sitting on the chair, don't he? And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from his goats. And he shall set the sheep on the right side, but the goats on the left. Then the king shall say unto, and then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, 
inherit the kingdom that is prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Seems like God been planning this thing a long time. Amen. For I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him and say, Lord, when saw we thee hunger, fed thee, or thirsty, or gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in and naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick and in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say, Unto them verily I say unto you, yeah. inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, oh, inasmuch as you have done it unto one mm -hmm. of the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me. Amen. Amen. In other words, you don't have to save everybody. Amen. You don't have to feed everybody. Amen. You didn't need to check out one person that needs you. Amen. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, mm -hmm. Depart from me, thy curse, unto an everlasting fire, mm -hmm. prepared for the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. For I was hungry you gave me no meat. I was thirsty. You gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in naked, and you you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they say also an answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry? and thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you. Mm -hmm. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not unto the least of these my brethren, you did it unto me. Amen. Then, and these, and these all shall go away everlasting punishment with the righteous unto eternal life. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his divine word. A reminder that the king is coming. A reminder that the king is coming. Oh, bless his holy name. A reminder that the king is coming. Jeremy, I want to say thank you. I realize y'all pray for us. But I want to thank you for vocalizing that. Uh, it means a lot. And while I'm on that, going in a little different direction, I want to say uh, that Sister Gail and Mass Bible study, we want to We've been having a good Bible study tournament. Amen. And we want to get we want everybody to be involved. Amen. So if you can, 6.30 Wednesday night, uh, Bible study. Amen. Okay, now we get back. <laughs> a reminder that the king is coming. Amen. When I look at this 25th chapter of Matthew, I see that Christ gives us three parables parables that teaches us that God is expecting something. Parables that tells us that the world that we live in now will not always be the world that we live in. Parables that tells us that a change is coming. 
The parables tells us that you have something to do with the outcome of your situation. Amen. And I'm glad about that. Amen. It lets us know that in these parables that God gives us the power to make choices. He gives us what we need to bring about a great outcome. Because when we look into the world and see the world around us, sometimes I get discouraged. Sometimes it is a discouraging thing to see that people have sinken so low and do things that are just simply so terrible. And then when you think about how long it has been going, you say, Lord, how long? Mm -hmm. You wonder how long things are going to be. But then you read the word of God. Mm -hmm. And God lets us know that it's not going to be like that always. Mm -hmm. He lets us know that things are going to change. Mm -hmm. And no matter how Bad, the enemy wants to hold it like it is. He can't hold it. He has to give it up. He has to let things go. He don't only tell us that things are going to change, but he tells us the thing that we need to do to be in the right position. He tells us the thing that we need to do to make sure when the change comes, we're on the right side of change. There's nothing no worse than being in a situation that is done and you can't do nothing to get out of it. Amen. And this is what the scripture wants us to know, that there is a permanent change of coming. Amen. And whether we are right or whether we are wrong, we're going to be involved. Amen. There's no way you can escape it. And he gives us these scriptures. And the first parable he gives us in this 25th chapter is the parable of the ten virgins. He said five of them are wise and, and five of them were foolish. Amen. And they went out all to meet the bridegroom. And remember the Lord is giving parables. Mm -hmm. The parables is to let us know that we need to see ourselves Amen. in this parable. Amen. The one thing that the Lord is pointing out to us, there was five was wise and five were the foolish. Mm -hmm. And what did the Lord want us to see? He said somebody is going to be on the wrong side. Mm -hmm. Somebody's not going to be in the order that they need to be in. He said five of them was wise and five of them was foolish. <coughs> and they all went out to meet the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. And let us know that you can Believe something, but you have to be prepared. Amen. They went out to meet the bride, the bridegroom. Five was wise and five was foolish. The wise took their lamp and took all with them. The foolish took their lamp, but they took no all. They took no all in their lamp. It lets us know that God is coming back. I believe in one scripture said he'd be like a snare. I believe one scripture said if the good man would have known Whenever the thief would have come, he would not have suffered his house to be broken up because he would have watched. He lets us know that we are not on God's time. He lets us know that we are not under, that we, I mean, that we are on God's time, but we are not on our own time. We are not, we are not controlled by our own condition. God, we are controlled by his condition. Whatever circumstances he gives us in life, that's the circumstance that we have to deal with. Amen. But he tells us that we must be wise. Whenever we live and as we go through this world, as we go through this unfriendly world, when we see all the bad and the ups and the downs and the goods and the bad, we see all these things, we must be wise. Amen. There are so many things that is pulling after your life. So many things that's trying to take you down. But you must be wise. The scripture says if a man cannot control his own spirit, he's like a city with his walls broke down. He has no defense. We must be wise. We must be wise. We can't go off and fly off with the hell at every drop of somebody's word. Somebody's always got something to say about you. We must be wise. We must be wise to not allow someone to pull you out of the character that God gives you to live in. 
we must be wise because five of them were wise and five of them was foolish. The scripture said the wise took all with them because they realized it wasn't on their own time. They realized that, hey, I don't know what time that the bridegroom is coming. I don't know what time he's going to show up. He may show up in dark. He may show up in the daylight. But any time he show up, I need to be ready. Amen. And this is what the Lord wants us to understand. It's not about me getting ready when the Lord comes. It's about me being ready when he gets here. How can I be ready? I need to make sure I've got all in my lap. I need to make sure I've done what God instructed me to do to prepare for his coming. Because one thing for sure, I don't know when he's coming back, but I know he's coming back. The scripture is telling us just to be wise. He's showing us disposition because he lets us know somebody's going to be in a bad position when it happens. He's telling us to be wise. To be wise. Because the scripture says, that at midnight, there was a cry made. Somebody cried out, the bridegroom is coming. Rise up and trim your lamps. The wise rose up and trimmed their lamps. And when the foolish got up, they said, I like to go down. And they had no awe to rekindle their light. But the scripture says that while they were seeking to get all, they were sent to get all. And while they were going to get all, the bridegroom came. And the scripture said those who was ready, they went to be with the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. And afterward, the scripture said that those foolish virgins came and they, and they knocked on the door. And they said, Lord, open unto us. And the reply was from the other side of the door, I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that. I thought about how those who was wise, they celebrated with the bridegroom. They went into a place where a place of celebration was a place of joy. They was able to be rewarded with a celebration. Oh my God, I love that. They were rewarded with a great celebration. That's what the scripture wants us to know. That God will reward us with a great celebration when we conduct ourselves wise. When we don't allow ourselves to be overthrown and be pushed out of what God has called us to be. They was rewarded with a celebration. Mm -hmm. The foolish was rewarded also. Mm -hmm. But they were rewarded with the words, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. Depart from me. Because I don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. They knocked on the door, but they couldn't get in. Okay. The Lord is telling us when it's too late, it's too late. Yes. Why do we spend so much energy? Why do we spend so much time? Why do we fight so hard to get a message out there? Because we know when it's too late, it's too late. We know when this time is gone, it's gone. We know when God shut the door, nobody is able to open it. We know that because the word of God has already told us that. We know what we're looking at. We don't know when he's coming. But we know he's coming. Jesus said, I don't even know when he's coming. Oh my God. But I know he's coming. Mm -hmm. So it tells us that the criteria of God to be able to meet the king when he comes back is to be ready. Yeah. The criteria is to conduct your life with wisdom. Mm -hmm. Conduct your life with wisdom because there is a whole lot of foolishness going on out here. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, you'll get sucked yeah. right into it. And you'll find yourself running with the crowd, doing the same thing the crowd is doing, operating the same way they are operating. And then you'll say, well, there ain't no voice of nobody else. Leave some wisdom. Look at this world and see how things are going. And so many of us are worried, worried about now who we're going to vote for. It ain't going to make no difference. Oh, my God. You better vote for the king. Amen. Because the king is coming back. Amen. Conduct yourself with wisdom. Amen. Don't get pulled into somebody else's mess. Amen. It's happening every day. Amen. People are being pulled into messes that they have nothing to do with. There are people who are serving live citizens in prison because they was in the wrong place at the wrong time. They was not conducting 
in themselves. Why? They should have been somewhere else. They should have been doing something else. And some of them there, they was warning. They was warned, don't be there. They were warned not to do that. But they didn't listen. The Bible said, be wise. Because the foolish rewarded with the fact that I don't know you. It's a sad thing that the Lord shall speak to you. I don't know you. It's a sad thing that you're not on the door of God. And the door has been shut. And the Lord says, I don't know you. Not only do it tells us that we need to be wise. But it also gives us another parable of how it was that a certain man chose to go away. He was going away and he would come back in later time. But as he was leaving, he led, he gave to, he's called his own servants. And the scripture says he gave to them talent to each one according to their ability. It lets us know that God is not going to put any more on you than you can bear. So oftentimes, we say, well, I'm going to come to Jesus when I get ready, when I get this in order, when I get that. You can't get it in order. Come to the Lord just like you are. The fixing that needs to be fixed, he'll fix that. The thing that he wants you to do, he will not put no more on you than you can do. All people will do it every day. They will load you down, break your back, and then cuss you out because you couldn't turn the load. But the Lord ain't going to put no more on you than that which you can bear. The scripture says he gave talent to each one according to their ability. According to their ability. And he was gone for a long time. And he came back and the illustration is the same as the first one. That the king is coming back. Yeah. And we can't forget that. We need to be reminded that he's coming back. And he lets us know in this that he is giving them each responsibility. And he's not putting a responsibility on them that they are not able to bear. And as they go about their business, it said the one that was given five and one was given two and one more. The one that had five came. When, the, when he came back, he said the five have gained five more. The one that had two, he said the two have gained two more. Mm -hmm. But the one that had one, he said, I buried mine. Don't bear Amen. your responsibility. Amen. Don't bear what it is that God requires for you to do. I was thinking about this morning, and I thought about how it breaks my heart. I thought about how it is. There are so many men out here that have came, they have impregnated girls and women and walk off Amen. just like the child was nothing. Failure to take responsibility. Amen. A man that won't take care of his own ain't worth nothing. Amen. He ain't worth nothing. Amen. The Bible said he that will not provide for his own is worse than an infidel. Amen. I ain't said the word of God said it. Amen. How in the world can you walk off and leave responsibility and make up an excuse and I can't, I can't, I can't. Find a way. Find a way. And the scripture says, seek you first the kingdom of God. If you seek the kingdom of God, these things will be added unto you. God said, if you will seek me, I will find a way for you. I will show you a way. We're not going to get off the hook. God is going to hold us responsible. Amen. We may lie to one another and get by. Amen. Oh, my God. But we can't lie to God and get by. Amen. Oh, my God. Amen. Scripture says he know your thought even before you think. Amen. Praise his holy name. Amen. The scripture said that those who had carried out the order, those who had took care of business, those who had done the things that they were supposed to do, whenever the man came back, whenever the king came back, they met with a reward that says, well done. Mm -hmm. And they was named good and faithful. Mm -hmm. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. If the Lord said you're good and faithful, it don't make no difference what everybody is got to say. Well done, thou good and faithful. 
faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. You didn't do a whole lot. You just done a little bit. But I reward you great for your little effort. I reward you for the work that you do. That's what the Lord wants us to know. Not only do we need to be wise in our service, we need to know what our business is. We need to know that God has an order and God is holding us responsible for what he knows we are capable of. Lord, you know my heart. We like that. That's a good scripture. We got bombed out on that so many times. But it ain't going to work. We might as well get it together, get it in our heart, get it in our mind. I think it's not going to, it ain't going to work. The one that had bird to tell him, he was reward, rewarded. He was rewarded to you wicked, slow for serve. <laughs> Take away the talent that he had. Give it to the one that's got team. Take that unprofitable service and throw him out into outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing the teeth. The Lord wants us to know something. He wants us to know that that responsibility is serious. Yeah. It's a serious responsibility. Sometimes you might think me and Reverend Clark and yourself here wasting our time just talking out know because we like to talk. Yeah, we like to talk. But we don't like sweating like this. <laughs> but we know what we do. Yeah. We know there's a reason. We know our job mm -hmm. is to reach out, to sell our own selves mm -hmm. in order to just try to say what needs to be said or what we hope to be say, able to say to bring you closer to God. Amen. Closer to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me say this again. I want you to go back to the 10 versions. They all believed the same thing. That's a word right there. When I read that, I said, man, I got to look at myself again. Because it lets us know that we can believe and still act foolish. And still wound up with a bad reward. Praise the Lord. Lots of us know. Oh, my God. Boy, that's, that's something. Listen to what I'm saying. A lot of us know. But we will, but we got another thing going. Man. He ain't gonna say that to me. He ain't gonna do that to me. I'm gonna get him back if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> you believe? You believe? There ain't no doubt about it. I said this time and time again. I never saw what I thought was a bad profession. I believe everybody that ever come and profess their hope in Christ, I believe they are sincere and they're real. But I just believe they don't live right. Some of them just don't live right. Y'all mad at me yet? Well, well, it don't really matter now. <laughs> It don't matter. I done did what on that long time ago. Praise the Lord. Uh, you still got some tipping. There ain't no tipping coming up in here. I ain't finna be no fool. And whatever the Lord give me, if he just give me one talent, well, I ain't finna burn it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, when the Son of Man and the king come in his glory. With all the holy angels with him. And now he tells us what the outcome is. How to serve. How we need to serve. He lets us know that when it comes all down to the wall. To serve God is to serve one another. Amen. How can you love God if you never see him and then hate your brother? 
that you see every day. Amen. He said, when the king comes, listen to what he said. He's going to separate them. As a shepherd separate his sheep from his goat. I love this because he said he's going to set the sheep on the right side. I thought about that. I thought about that. How? What are you saying? He's going to set the sheep in the same position that the son set with the father of God. On the right side. What did that mean? That's the side of power. On the right side. That's the side of authority. On the right side. He says he's going to set the sheep on the right side. That means that God is calling us to order. He's calling us to a high responsibility. If you go back and look, the one that did something with their talent, they had money was given more. Mm -hmm. And this is what he said, the same thing on them. The one that he said on the right side is a, a position of authority. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Because you see, here what we think, we, we, and we have a reason to think, we think we're just gonna go to heaven and fly around all the time. <laughs> That's what we've been planning. We even wrote some songs about it. <laughs> but that ain't what the scripture tells me. The scripture is telling me something else. The scripture tells me I'm going to sit on the right side. Now, the only way I ain't going to sit on the right side, I'm going to be a goat. I ain't planning on being no goat. <laughs> God speaks to me. And he trains me. He teaches me and he counsels me. He gives me what I need because I tell him I don't know. He strengthens me where I'm weak because I tell him I don't have the strength. He fixes me where I'm broken because I tell him, Lord, I don't know what to do in this situation. And I know that God is not looking for you to bring your own stuff. He's just looking for you to bring you. And when you bring you and you surrender your stuff to him, God will put in you everything you need to be what he wants you to be. It may not come overnight. Matter of fact, it won't come overnight. But little by little, you will see that God is bringing you out. The son said, son, while ago, he said, he's bringing me out. He's bringing me out. Oh, my God. And I look at some of you and I see how God has been changing your life. I see how God has been strengthening your life. How God has been turning your life around. I see how it is you're getting a little bit better. Getting a little better all the time. And I know something you ain't got as good yet as you're going to get. Because as long as you trust God, it is a forward move. It is a forward move. We're not looking back. We're going forward. Oh, my Lord. Set on the right side. Set on the right side of my Savior. And then scripture said, then we shall reign with him. He said, come, that has been into an everlasting state that has been prepared for us from the foundation of the world. God has been planning this thing. And I'm going to tell you, I'm seeing signs that lets me know that the Lord is soon to come back. Amen. I don't know the day, I don't know the hour, Amen. but I know when I look at the things that he told us to look for, and he said, when you see those things, know that the time is near. Amen. I understand this. I understand that we're living by grace now. And so oftentimes we see so much devilish and death going on. And we say, look like God, get him. And he probably need to be God. But we don't make the call. Amen. And when God 
decide to get somebody, he'll get everybody that needs to be got. <laughs> Don't forget, the king is coming. And this is what it's all about. I'm not trying to tell you nothing new. I'm just trying to remind you of something that you already know. But every now and then, we just need to be stirred up a little bit. Every now and then, we just need to be reminded who we are, where we are, where we're going. Church, I just want to see everybody come out of this thing the way it's going to come out. It ain't God's will in any parish, but all come to repentance. And so often time we're ashamed. We're ashamed. And Satan will make sure he'll hold shame over our head. And you'd be thinking about coming to the Lord. Then the Satan would say, well, you know what you're doing. And then you're like, yeah. And when you start talking to him, he got you. Y'all wish I heard. Let's see. Yeah, I guess I better. I like enjoying, I like laughing, but I'm serious. Amen. 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 The scripture says, whosoever will, let him come. Amen. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock, and if you'll open your heart, Amen. I'll come in. Christ wants to come into our hearts and make a difference. Amen. And to us, and I say this will probably fit us all, we all need strength. Amen. We all need strength. Amen. We're batting for it. Amen. Our lives are, we can go and do the best we can and then look and see where we fail every day of our lives. If we own it. This is why he said, walk by faith and not the sight. Amen. Faith is the life that I live because I believe in God for my strength, for my courage, for my direction, because I know I don't have it in myself. Amen. Let God fix it. Amen. Let him fix it. Amen. The door of the church is open. The choir, when that's the choir to give us another song, and as they, y'all don't get another song. Why do you look so sad back there? <laughs> As the choir goes, <laughs> as the choir gives us a song, the door is open. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The door of the church is open. The scripture says, Whosoever will, let him come. So there's someone in here needs to come to Christ and accept him as your personal Savior. If there's anyone here that needs to come to rededicate your life to Christ, you have this opportunity. And as the choir saying, the opportunity, the door is open. Amen. And you can come. Praise Amen. Jesus. Yes. Yes.
Praise God. know that our service is to serve one another, yeah. to do it with honor, with love, with respect, for reminding us that you have a plan, mm -hmm. a plan that you didn't just come up with, one that you had ever since the foundation of the world. Yeah. Prepared a place for us mm -hmm. that when this world can no longer afford us a home, mm -hmm. you have a home for us. Amen. We thank you. Amen. We thank you, Father. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for our gathering. That you allowed, Heavenly Father, just a few of your people to mm -hmm come together and to be able to lift up our voices to praise you yes. and to thank you for your word. Amen. Thank you for reminding us to live wise. Amen. Thank you for reminding us that you don't put no more upon us than we can bear. Amen. Thank you for reminding us that you have a place for us. Amen. A place where it's all said and done. Yes. An eternal reward. Oh, my God. Amen. And you did it all just because you loved us. Yeah. And Heavenly Father, as we leave this place, mm -hmm. oh, Lord, yeah. God, be with us all. Yeah. Lord, it, our individual, yeah. that individual heart, yeah. that individual uncertainty, yeah. that individual fear, Amen. That individual that feels unworthy. Amen. Oh God, reach in there. Yeah. Touch. Yeah. Let us all know, Heavenly Father, it's not about what we have, Amen. but it's about what you got. Yeah. Let us all know, Heavenly Father, it's not about what we can do, Amen. but it's about what you can do through Amen. us. Yeah. Oh, God, we surrender ourselves this way. Yeah. Knowing, Heavenly Father, that you are the one who fights our battle for us. Yeah. Knowing, Heavenly Father, that we will get through because we will believe in you. Yeah. We will operate by faith. We will operate not by our sight, not by what we see. But we will operate by what we believe. Amen. The God that lives inside of our heart will be our guide. Amen. The God that lives in us will allow us to treat our brothers and sisters the way they need to be treated. Amen. The God that is inside of us will empower us to hold our peace when we want to speak. The God inside of us will give us the strength to be everything you've called us to be. Oh, Heavenly Father, 
for this is our prayer. Yes. And Lord, we know that you said that we call upon you from a sincere heart. You would hear yes. and humble in a sincere prayer. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come now and we lift up these things to you. Yes. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to bless our families. Yes. Those, Heavenly Father, that is connected to our hearts. Yeah. Those, Heavenly Father, that is burned so deep in us, Heavenly Father, that whenever we see them struggle, Lord, we struggle. Amen. Whenever we feel them hurting, Lord, we hurt. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, our heart goes out to them and, yeah. and Lord, we are pulling. Yeah. We're pulling. Yeah. We're pulling. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to touch. Yeah. According to your loving kindness. Yes. According to your tender love. Yes. And according to your mercy. Yes. And we claim victory. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Count it as already done. Yes. In the precious name of Jesus. Yes. Now may the love of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. Dead, buried, and a risen Savior. Yes. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Yes. May it rest and rule and make it abide with each of us till we shall meet again. Amen. Let us all sing. Amen.